biggest story of the 21st century is the increasing unsuitability of command and control as the default means by which we organize ourselves. Let's take, for example, the recent News of the World scandal. Uh, let's take, for example, the way in which large organizations simply, ca simply cannot change in time before they go under. That is directly as, the res as a direct result of the way we organize ourselves, organize, our organize ourselves in terms of in terms of the way in which people are instructed to do work. Now, an alternative model, which is far far less stressful on the individual, okay, and, and can actually create a far more gr far greater levels of productivity, is a non-command control model, what we'd call a network-centric model. And that's easily seen by the way by the way the open source movement works. You know we have a situation where where there are there are literally network societies of programmers, okay, two million programmers working on ninety thousand software projects, and yet the biggest IT company in the world couldn't achieve that, and they've got all of this capital, millions of employees, sometimes hundreds of thousands of employees, and yet they cannot produce produce at the same level of effectiveness. Uh, they cannot do it on the same scale. So why don't we do that more frequently? And for me, the, the, the change that we need to, to make is really the way in which we educate people. From the very beginning, from, from literally from birth, we tell people that there is only one model of organization. That, that's basically I, either I'm in control of you or you're in control of me. And yet all of our biological processes, all of our weather processes, all of our environmental processes are all cooperative. The only thing on this planet that doesn't use co cooperation to achieve a particular end is the human species. I think we're beginning to see, see the, uh, the results of that. So the way in which I would change is I would, I would, I would from a, from literally from the time somebody can start speaking, we would start to teach them differently about the way in which they produce the stuff. Uh, we, need to, we need to convince them that the approach that they must take is collaborative rather than managerial, rather than this concept of I win, you lose. Um, because that concept create, creates the one thing that's brought about much of the pain that we've seen in society today, and that's fear. Pretty much everybody is driven by fear, and that and the model in which we operate in this kind of you're the boss, I'm the worker, you know, I'm the master, you're the slave. That that situation permeates all of our learning, everywhere we go, from survival of the fittest all the way through to being the boss in a company. It permeates our lives. It permeates our uh, our psyches from day one, and yet. Um, we could go back a couple of hundred years and look at some, some societies now, particularly the ones that we found in Mayan culture in South America, okay? And you've got to question whether kind of, you know, we, we looked at those people and thought they were a little bit backward, and yet they had that some of the most stable societies for generation after generation after generation by taking this very simple approach to being, um, it's not even spiritual, to being one with nature, to knowing that, knowing that they knew that the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment. If you destroy the environment, you have no economy. And we're, we're, we're in a situation where, where, where we've got this iceberg coming towards us. We all know it's coming, okay, but we're incapable of changing the way in which we, the, the changing the way in which we, uh, we view the world. Uh, and I think that comes from, that comes from education. And I think the, I think the task in front of us is the, the equivalent of trying to get a heroin addict, um, a, an addict off heroin. I mean, that is the, dif that is the difficulty of the, uh, of the task in front of us, and therefore I think it's going to take a generation for that change to come about, but it's going to start with the way in which we educate people. I, I've written quite a lot about this in, 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 in my book from a, uh, quite, a few, quite a few years ago now. Um, for me, conceptually, all of this lies in an umbrella, umbrella I call winning by sharing. And I have a kind of definition of winning by sharing. And it's a st for me, it's a state of cooperation that exists between 
companies, individuals, and even nation states, where there is a continuous, ex continuous fair exchange of value, as opposed to business and government, which is based on the notion of I win, you lose. And, okay, and if we don't move to that model, we're simply not going to survive as a, as a species. You know, we have a situation in in France, okay, in the last two or three years, France Telecom, which owns Orange Mobile here. France Telecom, two years ago, had 21 suicides in the workplace two years ago. In every single one of those cases, okay, we're talking about, we're talking about, they were all men, we're talking about men with wives and children. So it wasn't like they were, they were on their own and just, and just, and just basically checking out of life. These people had families, okay, and they pretty much all of them wrote suicide notes saying, my manager is killing me. He's making me the most miserable being on this planet. He's applying the most incredible pressure. Okay, and it's so, it's so tough, I actually have to go. The management team took so-called corrective action. So I'm talking about two years ago now. That management team, same management team that exists today, took corrective action, said they were going to do this, that and the other. There was a pause for about a year and three months ago a France, in, in France Telecom employee went into the car park okay, of his office in Paris, doused himself in petrol okay, and killed himself in front of his employees. Okay. He also wrote a suicide note and he complained about the management. Now just hold that thought for one moment. Seven years ago, the UK Work Foundation, okay, one of the most respected research organisations in this country, it's been going for over a hundred years, okay, conducted a report for the Labour government, probably about 2003, 2004. The government wanted to know why there were 2.8 million people on disability benefits. It's the same kind of problem that we're dealing with today. And they discovered they discovered that 60% of the people on disability benefit are there courtesy of workplace stress, the most extreme form of which I've just described at France Telecom. And yet successive governments or successive prime ministers, minister, ministers have known about this, but not one single thing has been done to change the, you know, why don't we change what's creating that workplace stress? Okay. Well, we can't do that because that would mean going to big businesses and asking them to change the way in which they work, change their organisational model. And they're going to resist that very heavily because they're predicated, fundamentally predicated on the idea of I win, you lose. Okay. And that learning, the way in which we, because at, at, at a very individual level, Okay, all of that learning <coughs> comes from the way in which we educate people. From the very day we walk into a school, okay, we're taught about individual triumph. We're taught to be individually triumphant, okay, as opposed to collaboratively, collaborative and group-based. And in fact, if we now start to look at some of the most successful economies in the world, which pretty much at the moment, <coughs> forgetting the, the riches in Asia, <coughs> is in Scandinavia. I mean, Scandinavia have a, have a model where taxes are high, but they have a fundamental approach to organising themselves, which is basically predicated on the idea of winning by sharing. They don't want to have huge disparities in income. They know, they absolutely know what that creates. Governments know what it creates, businesses know what it creates, but they can't help themselves. So the only way I think that we can really, really start to chip away at this is to start right at the beginning and to start fundamentally changing the way we teach people.